Hi, I'm so delighted to see so many of you coming out tonight. I am uh, delighted to be welcoming you to the series. Uh, tonight our film is The Life Ahead. I will tell you a little bit about that, uh, but I also wanted to give you a sense of the coming attractions. Some of you have seen the other titles that are coming in the series. The next film will be a Danish film, Another Round, on October uh, 14th at 7 o'clock, which is the film that won the Academy Award last year for Best International Feature Film, and it is an amazing film. Well, that will be followed by uh, on October 28th by Les Miserables, which was also nominated for uh, Best Foreign Film and was the winner of the 2019 Cannes Jury Prize. And then the series will conclude with Undine, the newest film for, by Christian Petzold, who also made Transit and has a kind of cult following around these parts, or at least it seems so. So that's what's yet to come. Uh, each one of these screenings will be hosted by me, but then the discussions will be, I will be co-hosting, and a different Nanavik fellow will be joining me who uh, knows a lot more about the individual national cultures than I ever will. So I'll be the film guy, and then the other person will be able to tell you something about uh, where it's coming from and why that's important that it's being made right now. Uh, tonight, uh, Professor Charles Levitt from uh, Romance Languages will be joining me via Zoom uh, for our discussion immediately after the film. Okay, now, what do you need to know about the life ahead? Uh, let me forewarn you that I, I'm a big believer in brief, concise introductions. But I do want to give you just a little bit of, just a, a bit of context here. The film was directed by Eduardo Ponti, uh, son of Carlo Ponti and Sofia Loren. All right, uh, it was, he, he wrote and directed the film. It is the third adaptation of the novel by Romain Gray, The Life Before Us. So this is the third film version of a novel, uh, which is about, in the la most recent uh, version was Mama Rosa, which uh, starred Simone Signore in 1977, which is another legendary film. But what you need to know about this film, and I think probably many of you already do, is that it does star a, a major, major figure in film history in the form of Sophia Loren. Film scholars and film programmers very often organize the history of film in reference to directors, and that is what my, most of our classes are organized around, movements and directors. We talk about stars, but only from time to time. All right, that's what people who like movies talk about. People who like film talk about directors, and talk about who's behind the camera. Secretly, we also are really concerned about who's in front of the camera. We don't like to admit that too much. But my point here in the case of Sophie, this is a Sophia Loren film as much as it is an Eduardo Ponti film. And what's interesting about that is that you have someone who, if there was a, a Mount Rushmore for Italian film stars, Sophia Loren would certainly be one of those faces. All right, and to tr and understand this film and how she brings with her her earlier screen personas, all right, I think is very, very much a part of why this film works as well as it does. It's not just that she's the big movie star. And in fact, she brings all of those previous, echoes of those previous roles with her. And so what I wanted to give you just is a very quick overview of her career, all right, in the form of where she started out, all right? She starts as one of the, in the 1950s as one of the first Italian bombshells, all right? Uh, who is, and so in other words, as you can tell, uh, and this, this was her American debut in Boy on a Dolphin. Um, she was featured because she was glamorous, she was sexy, and this was at a time when in the late 19th, during the Eisenhower era, the idea of the European bombshell was something was in and of itself uh, noteworthy because it was, it was part of what made a European art cinema sexy, all right, because in effect it was sexy two times over. It was sexy because of what it was trying to do with the form of the cinema, all right, and people would go to art houses to see that. But it also brought in a whole new generation of actors in the form of Sofia Loren and Marcello Mastriani and Jean-Paul Belmondo, all right, Claudia Cardinale, who were very much a part of that culture. And what while Hollywood didn't really know what to do with Sophia Loren, except to put her in a variety of different epics and uh, films like this, uh, where everything changed for Sophia Loren was in 1962 with a film called Two Women. This is an adaptation of the Alberto Moravia novel. Uh, it was directed by, by Vittorio De Sica with a screenplay by Cesare uh, Sabatini. All right. 
What we're talking about here are the real heavy hitters of Italian culture in the, in the 20th century. Moravia, arguably still maybe the greatest, uh, I think it's pretty easy to argue that he was the greatest and most influential novelist of the 20th century in Italy. Cesare Sabatini wrote the screenplay with uh, Vittorio De Sica, uh, not just for two women, but also for films like Bicycle Thieves. All right, and so in other words, we're, we're in effect there. This film was part of that Italian neorealist tradition, and it then uh, took the form of another very successful film. I, I should go back. Excuse me. Sophia Loren was not just nominated for Best Actress at a time when it was virtually unheard of for a foreign actress to be in the main competition for Best Actress. She won the Academy Award for Best Actress, which was pretty much unprecedented up to that point. All right. Uh, she followed up that success uh, with another working with De Sica again, and now working with Marcello Mastriani in Marriage Italian style. She was nominated for a Golden Globe, nominated for another Academy Award. And so how Sophia Loren then resonated within Italy and within international film culture became something which, in effect, varied almost from film to film, all right? She was still someone who, in effect, uh, it could be in a film uh, like uh, Arabesque, a spy movie from 1967 directed by Stanley Donan, where in fact she was still the glamour queen, all right? But then she could also be in a film like A Special Day, a Torres Scola's film in 1977, all right? So if you look at the filmography of Sophia Loren, it becomes a way, it has a very interesting arc in the sense that you can understand how, why it is so important for her to appear in this film. This is the first film that she was, took a starring role in in over a decade, all right? She had been, she had done basically glorified cameos in films like uh, Robert Altman's uh, special uh, uh, Ready to Wear and in uh, the film Nine, which is the musical version of uh, Eight and a Half. But whether she came out of retirement because her son asked her to, or whether she just wanted to do this role because it does seem to have been written just for her, even though we know that it wasn't, she incarnates this role. What I think is so interesting, though, about her in this film is that whatever Sophia Loren was known for in terms of either the very, you know, the, the films uh, that she made with Vittorio De Sica, what's important there was that they were imported to the States and they were branded for their Italianicity. Well, Italianicity in the early 1960s was a very homogeneous thing. What we're talking about in this film is not just a different kind of Italian film, it's a different Italy, all right? It's an Italy defined by immigration. It's an Italy defined by class difference. Uh, it's also uh, something that's all about, you know, how does a, a local economy survive in terms of the drug trade and how do people manage to act lives, uh, enact their lives with a sense of integrity and determination uh, in the midst of all of that. And so without further ado, I'd like to uh, roll them and we'll, I'll be around afterward and Professor Levitt will be joining me and we'll uh, have our discussion right after the film. Thank you.